St. Isaac Jogues, in true imitation of the bridegroom Jesus Christ, watched as bits of his flesh were cut off and devoured while the Mohawk high priest cried, Let us see if this white flesh is the flesh of spirit or devil. I am but a man like yourselves, said St. Isaac Jogues, though I fear not death nor your tortures. The fortitude of this brave man under torture was a spectacle as keenly appreciated by the Iroquois as were the martyrdoms of old by the Romans. In this case, however, the women were granted the duty of sawing off the thumb of the victim, as happened to St. Isaac. St. Isaac Jogues was put to death in 1646, receiving the crown of his martyrdom in the New World. His head was placed on the northern palisade looking towards the French frontier and his body thrown into the stream. But his blood sank deep into the land and his earnest words into the hearts of its people. From St. Isaac Jogues mystic union with the Mohawk nation came the Christian Iroquois. One of these, a bright soul in a dusky setting, and a flower that sprang from the martyr's blood was St. Kateri Takakwitha. She grew up, says one who knew her, like a lily among thorns. The human torches of Nero, Christians he had wrapped in straw and placed in his garden on the Palatine Hill and set on fire to illuminate his evening revels, are vividly recalled by the death of a Jesuit missionary to these men in darkness. Saint Gabriel Lalamont was wrapped in pieces of bark which were put in a blaze. His writhing frame and his quivering flesh made him suffer tremendously, and the Iroquois kept him alive until morning, leaving his body a black and shapeless mass. While the Mohawks were cruel to the Christian missionaries, they had been long practiced in committing evil to their brother natives. Indian captives held by these Mohawks were tortured and burned with solemn rites in the public square in the hope of propitiating their war god. While there are many great differences between the ancient Romans and the Mohawks, we can say this, in the absence of Jesus Christ and his bloody sacrifice on Calvary, where a god chose to endure the tortures and insults thrown at him while simultaneously forgiving them, there is left a void in the human soul which, at its worst, is filled by the murder and torture of involuntary victims. God the Son voluntarily offered himself as a sacrifice to God the Father on our behalf. The pagans offered involuntary human sacrifice to demons. In St. Kateri Takakwitha shine the light of true perfection like that of the early Roman martyrs or the fathers of the desert. The beauty of her virtue only showed the more strongly due to her surroundings. She served our Lord Jesus Christ in persecutions, fastings, severe bodily penances, work, fatigue, and the cold. St. Kateri would afflict her flesh constantly and beg our Lord Jesus Christ and his mother for the conversion of her pagan brethren. Daily she walked in the way of obedience and humility before the missionary priests and sought to be patient and charitable to others, even when she was falsely accused of evil. St. Kateri was not just a convert from darkness, but she marked forth the beauty of a daily conversion to our Lord Jesus, truly hating her life on earth while filled with the charity and joy of Christ. Hallelujah Audiobooks, hope that you will join us for the next chapter of St. Kateri, Lily at the Foot of the Cross.